right, so let's start with, I'm gonna start over here. If you could introduce yourself and tell us. No, we'll just start there. We'll, we'll come back okay. to the other things. Uh, Michael Kerkorian, I started at Buzz Darkness. Okay. Yeah, Way yeah. Back. How about, how about we start there and, and who you started training with, at least within this organization. Okay, Frank Petzold, I started with uh, Sensei Rossmack in Pepperell, Massachusetts. I'm uh, Brian Edmonds. I started uh, when I was four years old with Sensei Neil Stone. Erica Cross McDonald, and I also started at uh, Sensei Rosmex in Pepper Mass. Hi, Carter. I started and are still with uh, Sensei Buzz Durkin, 25 years. Jonathan Ross, I started training in 1992 with Nancy Govan. So one of the things that you all have in common is that you tested for advanced rank last night. And you know, one of the things I, I find interesting when you get into an organization that has a lot of higher ranks is things start to stratify a little bit, right? You don't, you don't teach the, treat these higher rank tests the same way that you might treat a, a showdown test. And, and I, I've had to step in you know, when I was the only high rank on a showdown test. And, you know, it, it happens a little differently. So what I'd love for you to start with is, how did you feel during your testing last night versus prior tests? That could be first degree, it could be you know, your first test. It doesn't matter to me, but I, I wanna get some understanding of the contrast. Let me start. Please. If I may, right, guys? Okay. Go for it. Go for it. Um, more comfortable. I have been studying now for a certain amount of time. I know what I'm doing and finally being able to express myself and show it, right? That's all what I wanted to do. And uh, before that, I write the show down. You don't know what you're getting yourself into. <clears throat> Me done, nah, gets a little bit better. And as you progress, but when you expect to hit a master rank, right? There should be automatisms in place. There should be something which shows how you express yourself, how you perform, and that basically, right, I was eager to show that to our senior masters. And going off of that, I think that when you're testing for a really junior rank, for me at least, it, there, were, there were nerves and it was about me and showing off me. But I think last night I was more concerned with making my sensei proud and showing, mm -hmm. and showing off what he has taught me than I was about myself. But to yeah. that point, our fellow students as well. We have a certain responsibility. I don't want to let them down, right? So, but Brian, good point. Mm -hmm. you're, you're agreeing with that. I'm, I'm seeing nods and I'm hearing. Yes. Yeah. I think the funny part is last night it was kind of like, we'd already actually, it's kind of the decision that we were going to be testing and that was already kind of done. And like, so all of that stuff is like already happening. We're not putting you up for a master's rank unless they're sure you're ready. Ironically, like when my tests, so to speak, happened was like six, eight months ago when Sensei Drick was like, yeah, you can test them. It was like the go ahead, which is like, no, oh, I didn't even think about that that day. And that's the day I really should have been nervous. But it's like, oh, I was I was actually nervous last day because I was like, don't screw up, don't screw up, don't screw up. I think like, that's yeah. the point because it, it comes down to mindset, like that's mm -hmm. martial arts, right? That's an aspect of martial arts too. So if you're not prepared to test, like that, you, it, it just has its, uh, it's part of the training, right? So that's the way I sort of approach it. It's like, you know. So the question that you asked was, you were trying to understand the, the difference, the contrast between how we felt when we tested for showdown and how we te felt when we tested last night. And for me, I would say there's no difference. I, I felt exactly the same. Uh, the only difference is I've learned how to deal with it better. Yeah. So, and you know, it, I had um, anxiety, mm -hmm. right? There's anxiety that goes, you don't want to let your teacher down. Uh, you don't want to let the people who helped you down. Uh, but I think over the years, something I've picked up is when you feel like that, just how to how to work through it, how to cope with it. And basically, you're you're scared, but you do it anyway. 
Mm -hmm. you know, and that's something I think that our mentors have um, instilled in us over a long period of time. Yeah. So I was really nervous um, for a few weeks leading up to all of this for probably a month or so, but something yesterday just kind of clicked in me. It's like, I know what I know. I am here for a reason. I, I would not be here if people did not have that confidence in me, and so that helped me as well. Just get up there and you do what you have been taught to do. Yeah. Just sort of going off of that, I've thought a lot about, you know, when you get to a master rank, stress is, stress is a part of life, and I think that when it comes to martial arts, when you're a more junior rank, you, you think about the karate, the, the physical moves, but at this point, doing this for over 26 years, like I think about, I think about my martial arts more when the unexpected happens, when I'm dealing with um, me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's just at the dojo. Okay. But when you when you're when you're when you're at work, when you're in life, when those unexpected moments happen, that's when your martial arts grounds you. And it's the same thing last night. It's in a, it's in a moment that you know. That's an expected stress. I think at this point, a lot of us can, can really handle those things. Yeah, and, and if, like the back of our hand. To add something to it is we're, we are actually learning or we're giving tools to deal with that stress. And when we go into sparring this calmness, we, we call it mushin, right? Where you clear your mind and of anything. And then all of a sudden there's nothing, right? There's just you and you perform it. And when you get in that stage, there's only one person that is you, and you just go through this. And, and I think through our studies, right, we learned how to clear our minds, to have a singular focus, and that is your kata to present it. Yeah, and all that training, it's like, this, it's, I can control this one moment, and I don't have to worry about the rest. I've got this, I know what I'm doing, and yeah, clearing yourself lets you do a lot of other things that you didn't think you could do. One of the things I, I think I'm hearing sort of in between your words is that the, the stress of, of this test, of this master's test, happened before. Whereas, you know, if, if I'd sat down with you one, two, three years into your training, the stress is gonna build to that day. Whereas I, I imagine, because I've been through this too, right? You stress leading up to it, you want to do your best. You want to express yourself. One of you said you want to make your instructors proud. But when you walk in the door that day, there's no more opportunity for prep. You just, you got to get out there and you got to That's work it. with what you have. I mean, I, I joke all the time that the belt that I wear just holds up my pants at this point. It's, and it doesn't it's, even do that well. It doesn't do that well. But, but it really, at this point, it's about showing what you know and, and just living living this lifestyle. It's not about a number anymore. Whereas I think, speaking for myself, at least way back when, it was like, I've got to get to black belt. Now i got to get to second. It's, it's, it's about a number way back when. Now now that, not that the number doesn't mean anything, because the number's important, but it's, it's not the focus for me anymore. Right. Like what, what number am I putting around my waist? Yeah, and the focus for us, if I may say so, is actually helping other students to advance, helping our school Hence, I don't want to let down my school. I don't want to let down my students, right? And and if they look at us and look at our journey, right? Erica and I were the two last men or women. These days, I don't know how people. to say that. People. Oh, thank you. Um, that standing out of a group of 30, 40, 50, right? Or whoever tested. But we did this journey. And, and I. it's just... A milestone, not just, don't get me wrong, it's an, uh, um, it's an accomplishment, uh, accomplishment, but for us, it's just a journey, it's a lifestyle. You move on and then every so often years, right, we go out there, we perform, and then we go back to our regular lives, which is being a teacher, friend, student. I want to press pause sort of right here. I think I'm having a technical issue with that. I oh, we were such a little <laughs> thing. So can you do that to us? I'm sure it wasn't you. It was just a driver. That's yeah. my sense. Good. Yeah, we're going to start uh, over. Good, good person. Oh, we yeah. start over again. Now I forgot everything. Yeah, yeah. You have to repeat, have to repeat my lines. Help you me. know, I, I have had to repeat episodes of 
four times. <laughs> I only had to do it four times. Uh, once because the, the guest wasn't happy with it. He said one thing in the middle. I said, I'll, I'll cut it. No, I want to start over. And then uh, a couple technical issues. Huh. It happens. So he was really happy afterwards, right? <laughs> But he had to read it. I'm just. Well, one of the people, I, I had one day of recording yeah. and lost four episodes. Oh, that is. That this was Skype. This is the old days with Skype. And Skype just decided to record silence. Didn't not record, it recorded the exact correct of time, just all silence. And we, we need to more, be more animated now going forward. Sure. And, uh, um, one of the guests was. Uh, Quite annoyed. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I did not do this on purpose. Why would I want to do this? We're going to probably trim that part out. That was. I'll, I'll, I'll trim it out. <laughs> oh. Unless it's really good. I mean, I will, it shows on extra. Like, it's authentic. That is, yeah. And, and what, this is actually coming back to us. What we're doing, I believe, is authentic, right? Being out there, uh, living the dream, being on a journey, right? Making it a lifestyle. Roll over with the punches. Yeah, it is authentic. Literally. Yeah, and, and that is how I look at things, right? And and, and it's just, yeah, it's life. Yep, yeah. <laughs> Don't cut this, please. Just... You, you've used the word lifestyle a couple times. Yeah. How, do you all see your involvement in martial arts as your lifestyle? Yeah, hundred ten percent. It's hard to get away. I've tried a couple times because I've been studying since started in nineteen ninety three. I left for a few years when I went to college. Then I left for a few years after I came back from college because I lived in Vermont and there was no way chi. And actually, COVID helped me because my teacher Bill started his karate school during COVID because they had to do online. I was like, oh. I go again. I live in Vermont. We don't have a lot of much. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I can go. There's something I can do. So that was, and it just keeps pulling me back in. Well, I think in terms of the, the lifestyle aspect, I'm, I'm an attorney. That's what I do for a living. And there are times where I don't necessarily get to the dojo. <laughs> and I find in those moments, that's when I get stressed out. It's like it becomes a, a focus of my life. I, I need to get back. I need to keep that part of my life sure. together because it, it's what helps I don't remember yeah. a time without karate, and that's mm -hmm. and that's sort of how how it works for me. It's, it's a part of who I am. It's very grounding. It's uh, yeah. I, I find that if I don't go for a couple of weeks or whatever, because life has gotten in the way, I get really cranky. Um, <laughs> really? Isn't that right? Can, can, can you yeah. all identify with that statement that it yeah. changes your mood if you don't it, train it, for a period sure. of time? It 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 does, right? It it, it does. And also. There are days when I don't want to go, but I go, and I'm always, always Why do you allowed. go on those days? Because... I worry about my waistline, I'll be honest. <laughs> I, I know if, if I help, I know I feel better afterwards. Exactly. I was just going to say, I don't always want to go. I am always happy I have gone. Yeah. Right. I, with, I tell myself on, on those days, I've never been unhappy that I did go. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That's right. You ask uh, how, how it is. For me, integrity, for instance, we have core values. I decided to right, change jobs because I felt my personal integrity um, is uh, in question, and I changed. And maybe it didn't start out like a lifestyle, right? When you start your training, it's you usually do it for your, your own reasons. Mine is I thought it was really cool, right? And so I wanted to try it. But there's so many life skills in the training, like patience, awareness, like all that. And that's, that flows into the other aspects of your life. So Absolutely. definitely lifestyle. I mean, I, I, my parents signed me up when I was four years old because I was a, a, you know, they wanted an activity for their kid. And here I am at age 30 still doing it. I yeah. don't think anybody, I know my parents didn't expect it. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, my parents signed me up early. Uh, Mr. Trainer tells, still tells the story. Mr. Durkin still tells the story. My mom asked me for some help, like, help me with this kid. And I was off and on the windowsills climbing around the dojo. Can't do that anymore, but it was fun at the time. You can, probably just I can. get some probably. different looks now. You need bigger yeah. windows. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now I'm teaching.
teaching the kids that are on the windowsills. Because I'm not a professional martial arts teacher, but I teach public school, so I teach kids. And I'm like, yep, nope, oh, this is this is mine. I did this. I can handle it. Yeah. Do you find that karate has helped you in your, in your um, instructing and in a hundred and twenty percent? I probably would not. Well, I might still be a teacher, but I probably wouldn't be any good at it. <laughs> if I cut my teeth teaching karate. It, it, Are you a better attorney because of your training? One hundred and ten percent. Well, I think that I, I talked a little bit about this earlier. You you have a drive, a vision, a, a perseverance. Those are the things that that we've been taught to just do every single day. And those are the kinds of things that my colleagues expect, my clients expect, is I have to, I have to push through it. And then no matter what's happening, whether it's uh, some unexpected event in court, some unexpected event on the way to work, you have to just push through it and you can't let it phase you. You have to be, uh, as, as my teacher says, you have to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. And that's, it has, it has helped me grow and I attribute most of my professional success you to my martial arts. Trial work? I do. I do litigation. So that's that's smart. Yeah, it keep, keeps things keeps things interesting. <laughs> how about over here? How does how does your training impact your your job, your profession? It's a lot of leadership skills. I think sort of embedded in the martial arts. I mean, understanding yourself, understanding how to build on your strengths, your weaknesses, how to be self aware. Though that's all things you teach. They, you learn in business school now, right? About yourself and how to be a good leader. So that's definitely helped me. You know, my mind. I would I would second that. I would I, I think the most important thing that has given me in my job is, is leadership ability. Um, for all the reasons put forward, like just to be able to get along with people and. Inspire them to be better, show them that you care about them. Um, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes you got to roll with punches, right? I know. <laughs> Why the dishes? <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna start to wrap. I want to make sure everybody gets enough time. That's why it feels really really short. How would you? Describe what martial arts has done for you to someone who has no idea what martial arts is. In alien lands, they walk in and they're through some weird scanner able to determine that, you know, maybe you're a little more resilient or confident in who you are or whatever than average among human beings. Say, well, what, what is that about you? And they ask the question where you say, I know it's my martial arts training. How do you explain to them? Forget about the punch and the kick apart. That's easy. You probably just show them. But how about the other stuff? It made me a better person. It made me to see um, the world that, for instance, not so fortunate people who join our dojo are actually like you and me, right? And I now gravitate to the not so fortunate people, help them just made me a better person looking with more open eyes around and trying to help and being forthcoming and and uh, I'm actually to the point to a fault maybe but that are gravitating over there that I want to help that's how it changed me and it made me somewhat more spiritual uh, in the sense of not in the sense from a religion perspective but from a belief set from a I don't know how to describe it from a value set, right? How I look things. Yeah. That's... We're not going to go in any kind of order, so whoever wants to jump in next. There's a weird kind of equity you learn at the dojo because everybody comes in, they take off their street clothes, they put on their gi. Yeah. They have a belt, but at this point, yeah. a lot of people's belts are black anyway, so you know, their belts are almost all the same. And at the end of the day, it's like, well, he can kick my butt. He can kick my butt. He can kick my butt. She can kick my butt. He can kick my butt. They all, they're all, can, at any given moment, everybody is kind of equal. There's a level, you know, just gonna, that guy's just going to beat me up. It's fine. And then at the end of the day, you could give him a hug and handshake and go about your bed, go about your day. Uh, but there's like a weird kind of equity that comes from all of that. Like, you just, you just beat on each other occasionally. What and it's fun. Um, I think it comes from like a view of the world that you're like, 
you know, we're all just people. All just, no, where does it come from? What's the result? Of oh, because that's in, in almost ten years, I've never heard anybody use that word. That's um, an interesting word to use. I'm not disagreeing. Yeah. No, I think it gives you like a view, like you could look at people for who they are, because you're looking beyond the other, other, other surface stuff. I mean, you learn a lot when you're smashing legs with people, when you're hitting arms, and you learn a lot about who they are. I mean, there's very way there's some time to talk, and you're going to learn about more about them that way. It really does, like, you're like, ah, people are just people. They all hit legs similar, some harder than others. Some shins hurt more than others, don't they? <laughs> and one thing it also taught me is that um, first impressions can be faulty. And as we grow together, we learn to respect each other and get over different opinions, different perspectives, and you open up, and all of a sudden you develop friendships. I think uh, the aliens have never seen martial arts. Uh, I think one of the things you walk away with is learning how to learn, which is an interesting concept. It's like, um, something you wouldn't think you have to do, but the idea of you know, really truly internalizing something it is not a surface level thing. Martial arts helps you break things down, look at the detail, understand it, a deep understanding. And that's, that can be applied to all kinds of different areas in your life. So, I, I, but I think martial arts is it's something you wouldn't expect if you were looking on the inside. I think it, it teaches you teaches you to be able to step back, assess, and move forward. Just like we do in karate, right? We go back, we go forward. Um, the reason, so I started karate as a parent appreciation program and went in and it was like the only time in my entire day that I could just focus on this one thing. It was amazing. And, um, and I think that, and then you're able to carry that forward. It's like, I can, I can, look at this and then I can also see the, the larger picture. So I can go in, I can come back. Um, so that's what I get. That's what I get. These okay. answers are uh, much better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, those are, that's, that's all so true. And uh, I, just, I, I like how you guys express that. <laughs> just because you're thinking about it differently doesn't mean you're not reaping the benefits, right? However, I, I, I've spoken with aliens this isn't, <laughs> this isn't the first time. And I think I was just called the alien. I know. Um, the real ones. Yeah, oh, I, I think that they would get this. To me, the, the word that comes to mind is strength. I just yeah. think that, I think karate training is, is strength training. Sorry. Uh, it's strength training. We're, we're, we just, it's, just made me stronger in, in every way. And I don't just mean physically, but, um, you know, it, it takes strength to do the right thing, no matter what that right thing is. Mm -hmm. integrity. integrity, right? You know, yeah. Yeah. It's like you're tired and cranky at home and, you know, but you know that you need to be kind at that, you know, in that moment, you, you, what, what my family's asking, from me right now is kindness. I got to be kinder. <laughs> that you, you know, in that moment, that takes a lot of strength. And I think we're the way we're challenged all the time in the gojo training. No matter what it is, there's so many examples of what we do where you're challenged to try to get stronger, either mentally, physically, doesn't matter. But we go we go through that process so many times. We're challenged so many times that we we overcome that. And, you know, so. I, I just think of the word strength. I think it all comes back to strength. Yeah. I, I had a similar reaction because it's one of those things that, you know, we, we hear all the time about people having challenges that they can't overcome. And, you know, you, people talk a lot about today about stress and, and mental health and all of those things that are really important. But I think for us that train in the martial arts, it, it gives us, you know, the power to fight through any challenge, the strength to carry on and the strength to know that nothing's going to stop us as long as we put our mind to it. We're going to push through and we're going to do the right thing. We're going to do all those things. And it, it, it's the martial arts that I know for me helps me get there. Every day. And if I looked at John's face while he said this, it radiated kind of a happiness, if I may say, right? 
You were calm, happy, explaining it, and I believe it's also a pursuit of happiness. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that, that is so important because when you come into the dojo and you go out, uh, come out of it, you're happy. Right? So, that, so, that is, so let's end on, on this question because as you were saying happiness, I'm looking around and you were all nodding or maybe you didn't even realize you were smiling. So were you happy last night during your test? I mean, I'm sure there are lots of other emotions, but was there happiness threaded through there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Afterwards. Yeah. Afterwards. <laughs> First exhaustion and yeah. then happiness. Let's put it like this. Yeah, just, yeah. I'd say yeah. yes, I guess, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's like an endorphin <laughs> rush for, from doing something that you're like, whew, this is like a long time coming. Yeah. <laughs> this is not like a small goal. This is like, to get to sixth degree, it's like 20 something plus years. I don't know exactly the numbers. I'm a math teacher, but I don't pay attention to the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I've enjoyed talking to all of you. I, I see the smiles, and I, I suspect the, the folks that check out our conversation later will be able to pick up on it, whether they're watching or listening. So, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much.